In this lab, I want to introduce a problem of critical thinking when completing an FEA problem. So one thing that I see beginners do quite frequently is trying to analyze an entire assembly at once when it may be easier or better to analyze an individual part, part by part. In this case, we have a car jack, and so we're probably familiar with uh, how the car jack works and so I'm going to put the load of the car on this lift plate uh, on the jack and then we'll analyze the, the lift plate. So here are the dimensions for my lift plate. So I have a sheet metal part that is 0.0625 wall thickness and so let's look at modeling this part. So I started a new part file and I'll start a new sketch on the XY plane and I'm going to draw a horizontal line somewhere out here in space and then put a coincident constraint between the midpoint of this line and the origin. And I'll draw a circle at the ends of this line. And I'll dimension the overall length of this line as the 2 inches. And I'll dimension this circle as 0.25. I'll make the other circle equal to this one and I'll change this line to construction line although I don't really need to do that. I'll then draw a two-point rectangle uh, around all of that and I'm going to dimension the distance from this line to the bottom as 0.375 and I'll dimension the overall width of this part as 2.75 and I want to move this over to the center and so a way that I like to do that is draw a line from the midpoint to the midpoint here or down here make this line vertical and then that moves it to the center and I'll change this line to a construction line as well alright then I will dimension the overall height of this and I'll do that as 2.5 Right, I'm then going to draw a, another two-point rectangle and I'll put this out here in space to initially and then I'm going to put the midpoint of this line at this point right here and I'll dimension this distance from here to here as 0.75 and then I'll dimension the distance from here to here also as 0.75. Now if I know that those are always going to be the same then I could just do equal, put an equal constraint on there but let's assume that we might change that so I'll put two different dimensions on here that we can edit the width or the height separately. I'm going to go ahead and extrude this. I'll rotate around a little bit so I can see what I'm doing in 3D and I'll go to extrude and I'm going to select this area and I'll set it to go symmetric a distance of 1.49. Then I'm going to put some fillets on here and I'm going to select this edge, this edge, this edge, and this edge and I'll do those fillets as radius 0.25. And then I'll do some additional fillets. I'll select this edge and this edge. I'll do those fillets as 0.125. Alright, then I'm going to shell this for my wall thickness. So I will do a shell feature and I'm going to remove this face, this face, this phase. Let's go ahead and put in that wall thickness 0.0625. I'll also remove this face and this face. And then I want to remove part of this up here but it's on automatic face chain which it would find tangent faces. So I'm going to turn off this automatic face chain and I'm going to remove this face, this one, this one, this one, and this one. I'll say okay to that. There is my part. I'm going to put a point in the center of this face and a point in the center of this face. So I'll do point center loop of edges and I'll do that uh, command again. I'll do point center loop of edges. So I have a point in the middle of this face and a point in the middle of this face. Now I'm going to split this face right here and right here back in our assembly. So this rivet is in contact with that face right there. It's in contact with the face right there and on the other side. So I will edit sketch one and I'll draw another circle here and a circle here. I'll dimension one of these circles as 0.5 the diameter of the rivet head and make the other one equal to it. Make that sketch visible and actually I missed something must have missed the equal so let's edit that sketch again uh, to make sure your sketch turns dark that it's all fully constrained there we go and then I'm going to split the faces so I'll do split and I'll select this circle I want to split this face and this face I'll apply that select the circle on the other side I'll select this face and 
this face. I'll say OK. Turn off the visibility of my sketch. I'll change the material to some appropriate material. I'll just use a steel or maybe a steel alloy. All right, we're ready to do our analysis on the part. Now, normally I would just do the analysis right here on this individual part, but so that we can visualize what's happening, I've actually set it up in the assembly. And so I will go to the stress analysis. Because I'm in the assembly, I've excluded all of the other parts from this analysis. So I right clicked and I did exclude from study to exclude the other parts. But by having them visible, it'll be maybe easier to visualize what is happening. And actually, I'm not sure on this one that I set the material, but we'll find that out right now. So I'll do a sign and I want to find the, the lift plate and let's set that as the steel alloy. Then I'm going to put a constraint on this face and this face where that pin goes through there. So I'm going to do fixed and I'm going to select this circle and I'll select this circle and I'll select this circle and the circle on the other side. Now I might do those as pin constraints but if I constrain all of the degrees of freedom uh, it'll end up being fixed constraints. So then I'm going to put a force load here and here and I'm going to do that as a thousand pounds. So I'm going to select this space and this space. And so we don't normally lift up the entire car all at once. We normally lift it like a quarter of the car at a time. I'm going to put a thousand pounds total load on here. It does spread that force out. If I do it as one force load, it spreads that out across those faces. All right, then I'm going to mesh my part and I would like to get a little denser mesh than that. I would prefer to have two divisions across this thin area, which brings up the question, should we use a thin bodies analysis for this? Check it both ways. So I'm going to increase the density of that mesh and I'm going to go to 0 0.05, 0 0.05. I'll tell it to do say 15 degree turn angle and I'll tell it to create curved mesh elements and I will then update that mesh. Okay, so we see it, we've updated the mesh, but I still don't have two divisions across this thinnest area, although most of the rest of it is a finer mesh. That didn't take too long to run, so I'm going to increase the density uh, more, so I'll do 0 0.025. Well, I still don't have two divisions across here, but I have a pretty dense mesh, so we have a really thin part here. We might try to run this again using fine thin bodies. It, I will hide that mesh visibility and I'm going to copy this analysis so I'll do a copy study but make sure my active study now is study number one. Alright I will go ahead and run the simulation. Alright our simulation is complete and I'm going to go to the displacement and I'm going to exaggerate that even more so it's adjusted times one I'm going to do that adjusted times two or maybe an adjusted times five. So when we see this we see that it is bending this area down right in here and bending this area uh, over here. These, this would be up against the frame of the car. But when we look at that, that isn't the actual results that we would see in a real physical test. And we should always verify that our digital model does in fact faithfully represent what would happen in the real world. So do some physical testing. So we set everything up. We have fixed constraints down here. We have our load up here. But let's look at how the logic of that uh, isn't quite right. So I'm going to go to static analysis number two and I'm going to delete that load load constraint and I'm going to delete the fixed constraint. All right, we know that the rivets here keep the sides of this plate from coming out in this direction in the z positive or negative direction. Now let's put a, a, a frictionless constraint on that face. So I'm going to do frictionless on this face and I'll apply that and I'll do one on each one of these four faces. All right, so I've applied frictionless constraints so that this plate can't come out in the Z direction. All right, now, when this is up against the car, let's think about this in reverse. So we have pushed the car up with the jack. So let's put a fixed constraint up here. So I'm going to do fixed on this face and this face where it is against the frame of the car. And then I'm going to do 
my force and I'm going to do this as a bearing force and I'm going to do it on this face and I want this the direction of this to go up so for the direction I'm going to point this as up I want to flip that direction though so that it's going up and I'll divide this four times so I'm going to do 250 here and I'll apply that and I'll do the same thing over here I'll set that direction as 250 in that direction and don't worry about the location of where it puts the glyphs um, it's spreading that force with a bearing load it's spreading that in a parabolic shape with the most of the force up here and gradually reducing as it comes around here and I'll flip that direction on that one and the final one we'll set our direction and we'll say okay to that okay so I have a total load of 1,000 pounds force to push the car up a thousand pounds and so then we'll run our simulation again remember we had that greatly exaggerated so I'm going to put it on actual and let's uh, put it on adjusted times one so we see that it starts to bow out here some and it starts to bow out here and so this is more like what we would expect in the real world uh, we wouldn't expect that dip down you know coming uh, over here and over here like we had in our initial analysis and then we have a stress area here and a stress area over here we might make the glyphs for these smaller if I go to the stress analysis settings and for the glyph display let's do that at say five percent and I'll say okay to that and that makes those arrows uh, much smaller I mean might even just turn off the, the visibility of those loads and we could come over here and uh, actually I guess we don't have an option to turn the visibility off here somewhere around we have an option to turn off that visibility we can go to this constraint the fixed constraint and if I say get the reaction force we see that we have a total load of 1,000 pounds reaction force on that fixed constraint so critically analyze your setup of your FVA model and make sure that it does in fact match the results that we would expect to see in a real physical testing. Dean Kamen, the inventor of the Segway human transporter and many medical devices, uh, makes the observation that it isn't what we don't know that inhibits innovation it's what we think we know that just isn't so so make sure that you observe and set up your analysis correctly now if we were going to do an analysis of these arms we would probably want to do a dynamic simulation with motion loads analysis and so if I go into environments dynamic simulation we would have to output a motion load for each of these components at different time steps so you do it in individual location you know at time step so here we see it with the displacement and we if we put it on actual so uh, just a little bit of bowing I'll look at my safety factor now we've talked before in previous labs with the safety factor that we may need to ignore or edit out certain areas that we have this tangent point between this planar face and this fillet and that's representing all that force being along that line and so that causes a singularity uh, which we can ignore we we'll check it in some other areas and make sure that our safety factor is up in acceptable level here's a tip for visualization if you go to the stress analysis settings and you set the excluded components as shaded so that we can see those so we could initially we have them as transparent and I'm going to set it as shaded and then I have to uh, go to my shaded with edges in order to see that so I can see my stressed part the original part and all of the rest of the assembly and sometimes that helps visualize our results as far as analyzing the other arms that would be done from dynamic simulation you would then do a motion loads analysis which I haven't set one up but we would set the time steps in which you want to analyze the uh, various parts